Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. After re-watching the first three seasons of Charmed, after watching the entire run, I wanted to do a video comparing what the first three seasons are like with, you know, compared to the rest. So, yeah, I'm essentially spoiling the entire show here. I'm doing this video for people who have watched the entire show. Other than obviously Prue and that sister dynamic, what the first three seasons had, and part of the reason this really can't be entirely blamed on the character of Paige, or perhaps more appropriately, appropriately on Shannon already leaving the show, there was a mystery, a sense of mystery, and a, a sort of more, a, a less tangible world. And those things are, of course, very much connected to one another. In the first three seasons, we don't see a lot of white lighters. We don't see, I suppose we don't actually see any elders, or at the very least, we don't get any... We don't have any faces for the elders, where later, they're just going to pop in, and that's, you know, and talk to the charmed ones, and that's that, you know, and there's less healing and less of a, you know, in the first three seasons, it's not so much, okay, well, we're going to get hurt, so we will just have to heal, you know, later they have Leo, they have Chris, it's just, it becomes commonplace. The healing, the orbing. You know, in the first three seasons, the orbing is something fantastic. You know, even though eventually, over time in the first three seasons, I suppose in the very first seasons, the very first season, there's not an awful lot of orbing. In the second and third, there gets to be more gradually, but it still doesn't get to feel really common, and it doesn't really lose its magic. And, yeah, later on, it's just, it's every day, you know, it's... Another thing is the, you know, we... And also the source, you know, by the end of the third season, you actually see him and you hear his voice. But when I say see, you don't actually see, you know, he doesn't get a face until much later on. And yes, that face is pretty cool, but it just can't measure up to not knowing what this thing looks like, you know. And seeing him just this one time, you know, he becomes like Emperor Palpatine in the original trilogy, you know. When we actually do see more of him, and when he's there, he becomes less interesting. Which is not to say that Emperor Palpatine wasn't still interesting, or the source for that matter. But it just... we get used to it. And, you know, here early on, it's still... You know, also because that was another thing that the first three seasons did really well. Less of a diff definitive kind of the evil behind it all. You know, only with the source does that really begin. And then they go into that over, you know, it starts near the end of the third season. I'm, I could be wrong, but I think the source is not mentioned until the third season and towards the end, you know, because before that we have the triad who, you know, they are mentioned, but then they're killed off, and then again we're left without a definitive evil kind of... But yeah, I guess it did begin with the triad. But yeah, third season introduces the source, fourth, and I think some of fifth also treat the source. And then after that, you know, we again don't have so much of a definitive evil. But then, you know, you get Zanku, and there are these... it just... And Zanku very much has a face and a presence. He's he's constantly there, you know. They they build him up well. I, I love Zanku. That's totally... Oded for rocks. Especially a Zanku. But... 
he is just, he is constantly there. You know, there isn't so much this mystery regarding him, surrounding him. So yeah, you know, again, we don't have the definitive evil, so it is just, again, more mysterious. I think also the, you know, the, the entire series has a, a bit of a disregard for continuity. You know, a lot of one-shot stuff. But after season three, you know, over time, not immediately, but over time, there does get to be more continuity. And we get a greater, you know, we, we see more things returning. And this is not only a bad thing, it is, in places, it's very much a good thing. But it does make it feel, I don't know, smaller, more compact, it, and it defines it, it very much defines it. You know, once you see the leprechauns, they pop up several times after they're introduced in, this, I believe, season five, Lucky Charmed. And, you know, other things like that, you know, how many times do we see trolls in the later season, or ogre, I think it might be called the ogre. Fairies, you know, we see one fairy, well, two fairies, and one child turned into a fairy in the run of the first three seasons, and sometime in the third season, I believe. That's it. Later on, they have so many fairies, you know, not necessarily in a single episode, but over the course of the show, we have maybe half a dozen fairies or so. And again, it just, it's like, oh, that again, you know, and it, yeah, it's just less, it, again, it becomes more commonplace. The, the magical world, as they even start calling it, just is constantly popping up, you know, and then it just has to be dealt with. Where, you know, in the first three seasons, it's very much wonder, you know, it's, what is this? We haven't met this before. Check the book. Find a spell. Something. And then later on, it's, oh, right, this again. Well, we dealt with it this way last time. And, yeah, that just takes some away from it. I suppose that's pretty much what I wanted to say. And, yeah, I would like to note... I do love a lot of things in the later seasons, and I do think some, you know, we would have lost a lot if we didn't have seasons four through eight, and, you know, I personally wouldn't have done without, you know, Wyatt, Chris. Wyatt as an adult, whether he's evil or good, is just great. You know, heavy metal, evil, Wyatt is awesome. And good wide, you can tell, you look at that, that face, and just tell me that that is not the future of good right there. You know, Chris is, you know, a wisecracking, fun character. The whole, you know, it does get to be a bit of, oh, this demon is after Wyatt, he's gonna turn Wyatt evil. You know, that does get to be a bit of an annoying trope, and I've already done an entire video where I, well, not an entire video, but in my eight season thoughts video, I do talk about Billy and Christie, so I'm not going to get into that here. But then we also have the season, the series finale, you know, and Paige does have some really good moments, and some of the, several of the interesting things between Cole and Phoebe happen after the third season. And of course, Barbus, who without seasons beyond the third one, would really only have two appearances, and while the very first one is definitely memorable, the second one is not quite as compelling, excuse me, and certainly not as good as some of his later appearances. <laughs> Read A Bad, Bad, Bad World, which is also just that double episode Amazing, you know, love it. And the avatars, so, yeah.
But I do think that the first three seasons had something that the later ones do not. And I think... Isn't there even a saying, it became a victim of its own success? Because the show ran for eight years, of course they had to repeat stuff, you know. It was, just, it was unavoidable, really. And they could have done worse. But it did make things less mysterious and... I'm gonna end it on a pun. Less charming. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.